This video will discuss lone pair hybridization in polyatomic bonding. So in all the examples that we've looked at thus far for hybridization, sp, sp2, sp3, in every case we had a central atom and we had external atoms that it was bonding to, but there were never any lone pairs. So we're gonna, what we're going to look at here is what is the case for hybridization when we do have lone pairs and how do things change. Well, it's still going to be pretty similar. So we have our carbon atom and methane and then four uh, hydrogen groups that go around there. And that forms a tetrahedral bond angle of 109.5 degrees between all uh, six uh, pairs of bonds there. If we add in a nitrogen, then one of our hydrogens goes away. Ammonia has a full valence shell on the central nitrogen when you have three NH bonds. And you have a lone pair there. And due to Vesper theory arguments from general chemistry, you would expect that the electron takes up more space and repels the other groups more strongly, pushing them closer together, and you get a bond angle which empirically comes out to be 107.8 degrees. When you add another lone pair by going from nitrogen to oxygen, oxygen has a full octet when it has two uh, covalent bonds to other atoms. So there in water, we have our two uh, lone pairs, which according to Vesper, repel each other even more strongly than one, making our two uh, bonding groups 104.5 degrees away from each other. So that's the general qualitative reasoning you would get from general chemistry using Vesper theory that this, that this would be the case. So let's see when we look at this quantitatively in terms of hybridization and the coefficients, uh, what's going to change here and how differently can we describe the orbitals in each of these cases. So if we look at water, for example, I might define this to be in the XZ molecular plane. Uh, then I have a 104.5 degree angle between these two. So I need these two uh, orbitals, hybrid orbitals, going away from my oxygen atom. They need to be orthogonal to one another. They need to be orthogonal to the two lone pairs. And they need to be normalized and pointing towards these hydrogens being 104.5 degrees apart. So it turns out that the way that you end up doing that is by constructing the following orbitals. So these coefficients of 0.45s plus 0.71px plus 0.55pz. So we're going more strongly in the x than the z and then going a little bit positive in the z ending up over here versus the same amount negative in the x and the same amount positive in the z going more to on the x axis than the z axis ending up over here. So it's trigonometry that determines what these numbers need to end up being based off of this angle. So those orbitals are going to be normalized and orthogonal to one another. And if you'll notice, um, what we end up getting here is these coefficients squared determine the character on each of the orbitals. So we have 0 0.45 squared is 0 0.2 or 20% S character. Because remember, the wave function squared gives you the density, gives you kind of the amount that the individual orbital is, uh, the molecular orbital is in that individual atomic orbital. Then for Px and Pz, 0.71, well, plus or minus 0.71 squared plus 0.55 squared gives us 0.8 or 80% P character. So when we're describing these orbitals as Spn, n equals 1 when they're equally weighted, n equals 2 when it's 2 thirds, 1 third, n equals 3 when it's 75, 25, as it was in the case for sp, sp2, and sp3 orbitals. In this case, we have 80 over 20, which for water would give us an sp4 orbital. So an sp4.0 would be a very p-like orbital because it's four parts p to every one part s. So this orbital is in fact mostly a p-type orbital in, instead of uh, sp, which is much more favorably hever, heavily favored towards the s. Where this n that we end up getting here, as I mentioned, these coefficients are determined by the, just the trigonometry of this, this triangle here. So the n you actually get for spn is 1 over sine theta minus 90 degrees. So when we look at this for our examples here with these given bond angles, plugging those values in there, we get that CH4 with zero lone pairs is sp3, NH3 with one lone pair 
at 107.8 degrees gives you SP 3.3. Water with two lone pairs gives you SP 4.0 at 104.5 degrees, all the way until if you had a 90 degree bond angle between, between atoms, then you would have uh, SP infinity or you just have unhybridized P orbitals. So something like an octahedral bonding arrangement where all of our exterior atoms are just on the X, Y, and Z axes, there you don't need to hybridize at all because the P orbitals are already arranged optimally for bonding. So it really is this bond angle determines how the S and P's are going to interact with one another to form their coefficients that we get, to form the type of orbital that we get, telling us how much S character or P character we need to have in order to have these orbitals arranged for the optimal bonding towards our external atoms away from the central atom.